morning everyone or good afternoon hopefully everyone's day is going good so far welcome to uh my first free uh, mini course uh so this one specifically i'm gonna do on uh, etsy listings um it's gonna be more or less a, a self checklist so you guys can go through each of your listings with each of these important parts and make sure that your listings are optimized uh, to the fullest so you can get the best results on etsy my goal for you is to boost your sales, uh, boost your visits, uh, to help you guys out and grow your shops. Um, so I just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, my name is LL. I've been on Etsy for a couple of years, since 2014. I've done a couple of different Etsy shops. Uh, I've been able to grow my business uh, really substantially over the last two years. Um, last year specifically was big. It's the first year I hit six figures, um, which I was really ecstatic about. Uh, and I made the decision to walk away from my corporate job, uh, the corporate gr grind. So it was good to get out of that and uh, really do what I truly love, which is uh, growing my Etsy shops, um, creating stuff for consumers and uh, using my creative side uh, to really put stuff out there and, and uh, increase sales. So now uh, what I want to do is uh, use the knowledge that I have and what I've learned uh, painstaking at times over the past couple of years and really kind of spread the wealth to you guys so you don't have to struggle as much as I did early on and uh, grow your shops as quickly as possible. So that's kind of my goal with this course. I'm going to go through the most important parts of your listings. I'm not going to go through every granular detail, um, but I am going to hit on the most important parts in granularity, uh, give you guys some tips, tactics, strategies, uh, things that the best shops are using right now um, to really increase uh, their sales and their visits to their shop because that's your ultimate goal. Uh, you can have the best product in the world, but if your listing is not good and you're missing stuff, no one's ever going to see it and buy it. Um, so that should be your main goal. So grab your coffee, buckle up, and uh, let's do this. All right, everyone. So the first area I'm going to start with is listing titles. This is a, a big one for the importance of your, your Etsy success and your Etsy shop. Being uh, the, the format that I want to use is, is a case study type format, which uh, so you guys can go in here and see real time uh, what I'm looking at. Uh, like to, today, I'm going to talk about uh, titles and tags, and then the, the genre will be uh, specific as well. Um, I think I'll probably um, let's hit uh, jewelry today. So, this is going to be real time, um, so you guys can kind of get a feel of, of what I'm looking at. Uh, so let's dive in here so you guys can uh, take a look at this. So Julie, let's uh, let's search for, let's just do a gold necklace search here. All right, so you will see all the items that come up here for, for gold necklaces. There is a lot, almost a million, 994. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is gold necklace is an extremely broad term. Uh, so if you are selling gold necklaces, I wouldn't put gold necklace as your first keyword. Uh, just a little background on that. Your first keyword is holds the most weight uh, in accordance with Etsy's algorithm. So whatever you put first, this person, for example, put DT name necklace. This holds a lot more weight than any of the other keywords in this listing. I'll click in here so you guys can see. <clears throat> So dainty name necklace is going to hold a lot more weight, weight than tiny name necklace. And then script name necklace, name necklace, etc. So make sure to start when you're doing the listing to start with the most descriptive keyword first. So if you have a gold necklace, you, you can put that in the title, put it, but put it later on, put it down. You know, towards the end, because it is a very broad term. Um, you know, this this specific necklace has uh, says Emma, so it looks like they probably are personalizing stuff. But if you are selling an Emma necklace, you would probably start the first keyword with Emma Gold Name Necklace, because that is or Emma Dainty Gold Name Necklace. That is very descriptive. 
Um, and just because you're using multiple keywords, that is still considered one keyword. So this dainty name necklace is one search term. Uh, now, if people search for a name necklace, they could still come up, or dainty name, it could still come up. Um, but this is, if someone searches for dainty name necklace, it will come up. Uh, and your listing will probably be uh, at the very top of search because it is really specific. Uh, that's another thing, Etsy really wants to drive long tail keywords. So this is considered a long tail keyword um, because there's it's not just one word, there's more than one word. Uh, preferably three words uh, is probably the, the best long tail keyword, at least three words. Um, so this one does have three. Um, so if you just have one word, such as necklace, that's, that's way too broad. So just think of long tail keywords as a very specific descriptor of your item. Uh, the less words you use, the more broad it's going to be, and the less chance of people finding your item. Item. So think of it as a funnel. Broad words are at the top. Uh, the more words you use, it, it narrows at the bottom and becomes way more specific. Um, and when you're trying to think of words to describe your item, I would think about if you know you had a um, a blind friend you're trying to describe uh, what you're selling to them and they couldn't see it. Um, so you're trying to paint, more or less paint a picture for them. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense uh, with, with how I explain that. Um, let's look at another one here. <clears throat> Circle necklace. Circle necklace. Dainty gold circle necklace. Karma necklace. Sterling silver. So I would probably move this dainty gold circle necklace to the front because it's more specific than just a circle necklace. Because a circle necklace is going to be gold, silver, so maybe someone wants a, a small uh, gold cir circle necklace, so they may type in dainty gold circle necklace. So you'd want to move that at the top. Otherwise, uh, this one's pretty good um, as far as keywords. So there's 160 characters here um, for your title. Um, another tip is to make sure that that's all filled out um, or as close as possible. I mean, you're not going to, if you have three characters left, you're not just going to put in, you know, letters or something like that with it, where, where it makes sense. If you have 10 or 15 characters left, I mean, that's fine. But like I said, start your first keyword is the most important keyword, the most specific keyword, and then narrow down from there. And you can see where they use commas. Some people use dashes. Let me see if I can find a, someone that, well, the first one we looked at uses dashes in between their, their spacing. You can do that too. Um, you'll lose some characters because there is extra spacing here. You don't necessarily have to have these spaces. Um, from what I've found, I don't think it really makes a difference um, whether you use commas or dashes. Uh, personally, I think dashes uh, look a little bit better uh, than commas, but as far as SEO goes, it doesn't really make a difference from what I've found. Um, I've used both and I still use both, but it, it doesn't seem to make too much of a dif difference. The words are the uh, most important um, with your, your Etsy search in your title. So uh, just to touch on well, let's look at one more and then I'll give you another tip and then I'll, I'll let you go for today. Um, let's see here. Here's another one. So tiny letter necklace, dainty necklace, personalized bridesmaid necklace, initial gift necklace. Um, these are all pretty broad. Uh, as far as the title goes, they're all filled out. These are all decent keywords, but they might want to think of something that is a little bit more specific for the first a long tail keyword um, because it is a it looks like it is a gold necklace so they can probably combine this gold necklace in with this tiny letter so tiny letter I would probably say dainty tiny letter gold necklace is probably a good one to start with um, and another tip real quick you don't if you do dainty tiny letter gold necklace you don't have to have dainty necklace or gold necklace in here. 
because it's it becomes redundant then because if someone searches for any of those it'll come up in search so you can think of other keywords to put in here and take out dainty and take out gold that gives you two more spots for completely different keywords where someone can find your item all right so one last tip here and then i'll let you go as far as uh, titles go for today uh, say you're you're really struggling with what keywords to put in your title um, one thing you guys can do is go in here and use Etsy itself. Um, the search bar is, is awesome for coming up with ideas. So I'm trying to have a gold necklace. I'm kind of running out of ideas. So I put in, you know, just put in gold necklace. So these are what people search for the most. Um, so you can use these as keywords. Um, a lot of these are going to be a little bit more broad. So you can, you want to think of more specific ways to, uh, narrow it narrow down the search, but you can definitely use the school necklace Gold necklaces for women gold necklace for men gold necklace chain gold necklace dainty so all of these are, are Can be good uh, keywords if they describe your item um, I mean you can go in and, and be really broad and just put necklace and Some of these may be good too. keep in mind. These are probably going to be even more broad than than the last one um so necklaces for women, necklace holder. Um, you know, you could do necklace. You can do dainty gold. I mean, that's super broad, but just necklace comes up. Um, but play around with that. That'll give you guys some ideas um, to see what people are actually searching for. Um, so you don't have to to try and come up, come up with everything on your own. Uh, but just remember, put the most important keyword first and try to fill out your title, um, the entire title. Um, that should help you guys in your search uh, and, and keep everything specific to your item. You don't wanna put in words that, that don't apply because they won't be relevant and that'll hurt your search as well. All right guys, moving along, this next section I'm gonna talk about is product photos. Uh, this is another very important area of your listing you want to make sure that you have uh, high quality photos to display your products um, so I'm going to use as an example in this walkthrough I'm going to use art um, that's probably a good as a good example as any uh, because if you don't display your art properly uh, no one's gonna buy it so let's pull up a listing so you guys can uh, can follow along here and see uh, we're just going to be very general with our keyword here um, <clears throat> In case you guys don't know, when you're searching on Etsy, these top ones are ads. People are paying for these. So if I clicked on one of these, uh, it would cost someone money. So I won't click on them. I'll be a nice guy today. Um, let's look and see. Um, well, that looks that looks interesting there. Um, so very general. <laughs> very general. Um, you're getting a lot of different stuff. So let's just do, uh, let's actually do canvas art. So this is why you should be very specific when you're talking about your keywords. All right, so let's just go into one of these here. All right, so when when your your photographs, you want to make sure that they're high quality, so the lighting is good. Um, you can see, clearly see what you're selling. Um, so the lighting here is good. Um, you can clearly see that they're selling these this three panel canvas art. Um, let's scroll over here. So this is positioned in a different way. Again, a different way. It looks like they sell multiple panels. Um, this is in a different room, which is good. And then here's all the, the dimensions of the art. And here's how it's made. Wow, so this one is this one's really thorough. They pretty much hit on all the, the top points. So when you're taking your photos, you A wanna show your show your product in a good light so people can see it. Um, B, you wanna take photos from every angle. Um, so people can see every angle of the object. With art, it's pretty easy, it's just a front angle. Um, but what they do really well here is they place it in different rooms, in different settings. So you can really imagine that art in your house. Um, so people want to put themselves, you know, put 
people want to imagine that item in their hands, using it or displaying it. So that's really what you want to capture in your listings, uh, your listing fo uh, photos. So if it's a shelf, you want to put stuff on the shelf and and <clears throat> take photos of that. If it's art, you want to put it in different rooms so people can see how it looks in different rooms and different lighting. Um, if it's a necklace, you want to put it you know on a person and, and take a picture with maybe a couple different outfits on so they can imagine themselves wearing it with that outfit. If it's a hat, you want to do the same thing, put a couple different uh, shirts on with the hat. So you want to try to, if possible, put that item in a setting on a person in use and capture that through photography. Now, if you're, you're starting out, you may not have the resources to, to do that um, and, and uh, have people model it or it may be really time consuming to put it in different uh, areas. But just make sure when you're taking the picture that you're, uh, you know, the lighting is good and it's a high quality picture and it's displayed well. You don't have to go through all those steps initially um, and all that, that uh, time consuming activities and, and resource um, involving activities. So just, just keep that in mind. <clears throat> um, that's what you wanna shoot for. And then this, this person did a good job of putting the actual little details in here. A sizing chart is good. Um, always, you know, because people don't always look in your description. It should also be in your description if possible, uh, but people don't always look in your description. So they have a size chart and then they also have, have it looks like how it's made, which is really cool. People can see the quality of it. Um, so they go all out. Uh, the only thing there's, the other point that I want to make here is they use seven pictures. Uh, Etsy does give you eight slots for pictures. So if possible, you want to try to use all those slots up um, with your different picture angles and placements. Um, like I said before, you may not have the resources to do the, all those different settings. Um, so do as many as possible, um, but just make sure they're high quality. So you don't always have to use all eight slots, but you just want to try and shoot for it if possible, depending on what you're selling. All right, let's check out another one here. Uh, we'll just go to the one right here beside it. All right, so here's another one. This is a picture displayed on the wall. So pretty good angle here. You can see the front. Also, you can see that it wraps around the side. Um, so that would take away an eliminated question. Hey, does the canvas wrap around the side? Yes, it does. I can see that from the picture. Um, so that's really good. Uh, here's uh, another display on a different wall texture. Uh, here's one on a table. Here's one with stuff around it. Here's from the bottom. Yeah, and these are other close-ups. This one includes a frame. So yeah, this one's pretty good as well. They use actually all the uh, photo slots. Um, they get every angle, every shape, and they put it on different textures. Um, so they do a really good job here too. The lighting's really good. It's high quality pictures. So this is a really good, another really good example of what to shoot for when you're doing your photos. All right, let's see if we can find another one. Let's go, let's go way back and see. Because these top ones are gonna be the most popular. So there may be some back here that that we can uh, provide some tips for. Hmm. Yeah, all these seem pretty decent. All right, let's look at this one. Okay, this is uh, an acrylic painting. So yeah, this is, uh, I would, this first picture is a close up. Sorry, right here is a close up of the actual painting. So by the design, I was trying to, I was kind of confused what that looked like. Um, and then the next picture really put that in perspective for me. So uh, this is a good example of putting your best picture first, the, the most descriptive picture first. Um, 
So yeah, that's a super close up. So you wouldn't want to put this picture first. Um, I personally would probably have put this picture first because it shows it in a room setting. So it's clear to see that this is a rectangle and the design. Uh, this, I'm not sure. I wasn't sure if this gray area was part of the picture or not until I went to that next picture. So if I'm, if I'm uh, you know, looking through Etsy, like right here, I may move past this because I think that that gray area is weird. Um, so if I see the, you know, this one up here, if I see it in the setting, I clearly know that that's a picture and it's framed out. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind, put your best uh, picture first. Um, so people, when they're shuffling through their feed, they don't just go right by you. So other than that, I mean, it's, these pictures aren't bad, they're pretty good. Um, they use five, they could have maybe done another setting, if they added another wall where they could have displayed it to kind of show you a different setting. Um, but other than that, it's pretty good. Um, so that's kind of the gist when it comes to, to photographs. Uh, you want to use as many as possible, good lighting, different angles, place it in areas where people can visualize. Uh, that's a big one. Um, that's why people stage houses so they can visualize themselves in a house. So you want to do the same thing with whatever you're selling, if possible, put it in use or in on display. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on really quick is when you're posting your picture, like I said, you want to post your best picture first um, in your listing, the one that displays your item the best or what you think is the best because that's what people, when they're scrolling through the feed here, that's what they're going to see and stop on, what, what catches their eye. But when doing that, Etsy will give you a thumbnail this is a thumbnail, these little pictures. So what you wanna do when you're posting your first picture is make sure the thumbnail uh, is set up in a way that it displays your item the best. So here, I'll show you really quick. I have a good example. Um, so I just captured a piece of art here, um, which let me see. So here, here's the piece of art. This is just an example, it's not mine. Um, so this you can see, it's a pretty good picture. It shows it in a room. Um, on display. So this, I want to use this as my first picture, okay? So when I put it in as a thumbnail, see it looks like this. So when people are scrolling through for the, th uh, the thumbnail pages, they're going to see this plant and a little bit of the picture. It's not a very good representation of what I'm trying to sell. So what you want to do is adjust the thumbnail here and you want to zoom it out so you can see it. And then you want to save. So that should save in just a second. So now this is a much better thumbnail. You can clearly see the art and how it's displayed. So it's more eye catching when you're scrolling through. So just keep that in mind. Always check your thumbnails because um, it may put your item out of sight or not in a very good light. So make sure to adjust that. The other thing I want to touch on is um, <clears throat> using a smartphone is really good. Uh, most smartphones take really good pictures now. Um, when you're using a smartphone, you can use that smartphone to lighten the object. Uh, a lot of them have a, you know, very good filters. Just make sure that you're not changing the coloring, that you're just lighting, lightening uh, up the photo. So that's really important. If you're changing the color from green to blue um, and people buy it, they're going to be pretty upset. So keep an eye on your colors uh, when you're using filters. Uh, the other thing you can do is invest in a lighting kit. Uh, a lot of them are pretty affordable on Amazon, so I'll show you here. You just type in uh, photograph light photography lighting kit. Um, you know, here's one for 52 bucks, uh, 62 bucks. So the main thing is you just want you want the lights here, these little uh, these little lights, and then you want the little umbrellas. Um, so basically, the light will reflect off the white umbrellas. So you really only need two or three umbrellas and two or three lights. Like this is a really good lighting kit here. I actually have this one, uh, the Photography Photo Portrait Studio. This one's like 50 bucks. It has three lights, uh, two umbrellas, and it reflects off. So you just set that up, and then you set your product up in the middle as far as how you're trying to um, capture it. Or if it's on the wall, you can bring these out and, and take a photograph that way. So clearly... These work for smaller objects. If you have a huge object, it may not work for. Um, but for in most cases, uh, these lighting kits are good. So keep that in mind. Um, you don't have to invest in it right away, uh, but down the road, it is something to keep in mind.
when you're taking your photographs. All right, guys, in this next section, we're going to talk about another really important area uh, in your uh, listings, which is actually going to be the descriptions section. All right, so let's dive in here. Um, what we're going to do is pull up a, a couple of different shops and just look at their descriptions and we'll talk about some different strategy um, tips and, and tricks and stuff that you guys want to pay attention to when doing your listings. Um, <clears throat> everyone's going to be a little bit different. You want to kind of find your own voice, but uh, your listing should involve the, the same components uh, no matter what as far as uh, you know, basically just thoroughly talking about your item. So. Uh, let's pull up an item here and uh, see their description. Um, so let's do uh, let's let's do clothing today. Um, so let's do a hoodie. Whoops, spelled that wrong. Since it is cold in in most of the United States right now, we will talk about hoodies. Uh, so clothing uh, is usually really important because it fits differently. There's different styles. Um, so let's go down here. This is kind of general, so it's, it's really all over the place. Uh, so this one catches my eye. So let's go in here and look and see their description. All right. <clears throat> so usually uh, this is a shorter description. You don't have to, sometimes it'll have where you can see more here. All right, so the description here, they have uh, their basically their title, Stripe Chalk Terry Pullover. Uh, they have their website in here. Uh, then the striped Terry hoodie is perfect for a day at the beach or an evening at the fire, um, which is good. I like how they put in what it's good for. So it's always good to kind of paint a picture for your customer. You know, where what situation would your item be good for? Um, what event would your item be good for? Um, who would like your item? Who's your item perfect for? So that's always good. Um, then they also have the what the item's made out of: 60% cotton, 40% polyester. So this is good. You should always put your specs in there, sizing, um, what your item's made of, how it's made. Um, so they have all that in there. Burnout fade look is com composed of loose terry knit fabric. That has a technique of burn washing, raw edge, front pouch pocket. Um, so they do a really good job of describing this uh, item. This product has a loose fit. If you do not like your sweatshirts oversized, we would suggest you go down a size. So this is pretty good. They do a good job describing the item, who it would be good for, uh, and the sizing, uh, which is really important with clothing if it runs big, if it runs small. I mean, you're going to get a lot of questions on that. Uh, so it's really good to, to put that in there. They don't really talk about, this one's kind of general because this is a Jeep shirt. Yep, you wish you had one. Um, it's kind of general though as far as describing what's on it. They do say it's good for the beach or evening, but uh, this is talking about a Jeep. So I would put in there, you know, it's, it's a good shirt for Jeep lovers or a good gift for a Jeep lover because um, it seems like they probably have the same shirt and just do different designs on it, so they just kept it general. Uh, but their their title was general too, so it doesn't have anything about a Jeep in their their title. So if you're going to start with a title, I would put uh, a little bit more specifics uh, in there as well. So just some pointers. Um, another thing you can add in your description is uh, policies. Um, now there is a policy section, um, but a lot of people don't look at it. So you want to put the most common uh, policies in there. You know how how quick does your item ship out? Um, you know, ships out within one to three days. Um, you know we use standard shipping, or we use first class shipping, and then you know return policy is another common item that you can put in there. Um, you know, we accept returns within 14 days. 
uh, stuff like that. Anything applicable uh, or anything you might get questions about or gotten questions about before, you want to try to put in your description where it makes sense. Um, your goal with your description is to have this customer look at your item description and not have any questions. You answered all their questions right then and there. Because the chances are if they have a question, they're just going to move on. They're not going to ask you their question. They're going to find their item somewhere else. Uh, and they're going to move on and, and buy it from the person that did answer their question. Um, they don't want to go through the time of messaging you and waiting for a response. So try to try to hit that uh, in your description so that you don't have that problem. Um, all right, so let's go to another listing so you guys can so you guys can see. Ooh, here's a best uh, best seller. So Etsy does put this best seller tag there. Um, um, I don't know how many you have to sell before you get that, but I know it's a bunch. They don't, I don't think they make it known how many you have to, to sell. So this is a lacrosse shirt. So see how it has a more tab here? Um, you can click more and it has the full descriptions. So available sizes, men's, so it has a sizing. And they, uh, they broke this down in sections, which I like. You can definitely do this too. Quality, here's a description of how it's made. Here's a description of the sizing, find your size. Shipping, here's what I was just talking about as far as shipping. And then refunds and exchanges. And then here's uh, just a, a positive note, which you can put a little bit about your shop maybe in there. You don't wanna make it too long-winded because people probably aren't even gonna get this far. Um, but these are pretty much the main points. Again, I would describe who this is good for up here. They don't really put that. You know, this is a Beacon Hills lacrosse shirt. Um, you know, maybe you want to put, I don't know if this is uh, specific to anything, um, but maybe you want to, I don't know what the Beacon Hills, if, that, if that's an actual place or it's from a movie or whatnot, but um, you want to make sure to address, say this is a, a great lacrosse shirt for, you know, people who play play lacrosse or have a cross lacrosse event coming up or something like that. Just a little tidbit in there will will kind of help. All right, let's jump into another one. Um, I'm, I'm sure you guys get the idea right now. Um, wow, here's a hoodie for 118 bucks. Let's check this out. All right, handmade hoodie made of high quality sweatshirt and cotton. So this has a description. This has the types, this has the sizing, time of making, four weeks, wow. So yeah, I guess it is handmade in time of shipping. So this is good um, timing, especially if it takes this long, uh, it's good for people to know how long it's gonna take. So yeah, pretty much, this is pretty basic. Uh, it covers all the, the major points a um, little bit of policies, type, and descriptions. Um, we'll do one more since that one was pretty quick. Let's jump into one more here. All right, here's uh, an equestrian hoodie. Let's look at this one. Personalized equestrian hoodie. So that pretty much describes exactly what it is. Girls horse riding hoodie personalized with initials. So you can, for personalized items, they have a description in here, which is good as far as what to do uh, at checkout and how to personalize your item. So that's always good. They have the sizing chart here, which this kind of, you can put it here. This is kind of a lot how they have it spread out like this. Um, I would always recommend putting the sizing chart in the photos as well, uh, but you can put it in here. I would probably just space it a little bit better. And then all orders are sent within one working day. All right, so you guys kind of get the point. You can, you can add your own flavor to the description section. Um, just don't make it too brief. You wanna try and describe your item, who it's, who it's best for or who will love it. Um, who it's a great gift for. Um, describe uh, the details of the product, you know, how it was made, what's it made of, the materials, stuff like that. Um, 
make sure to include the dimensions and sizes of your product, especially if it runs big, it runs small. Um, if the, the size varies a little bit, you know, maybe you're doing a raw edge shelf or something like that and the width varies by a couple inches or it may not be the exact same item if it's made by nature part of it. Um, so make sure to include that there is variations. Um, you can add important policies to the section like I, talk, like I t uh, talked about earlier, shipping, uh, return policy, stuff like that. Uh, but at the end of the day, keep in mind that your goal should be to answer all of your customers' questions before they have to ask you. Uh, again, if they have to ask you, they're probably not going to ask you and they're probably just going to move on and try to find a listing where it does answer the questions and then just buy from them. So hopefully that helps, guys. Um, just keep those points in mind when you're, you're doing your next uh, Etsy listing. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, glad to have you again. Uh, today's topic in the case study we're going to talk about uh, is one of the big three. Um, I, I know I say each one of these is, is really big, but this one is really big. I'm serious this time. Um, it's going to be tags, listing tags. All right, so what we're going to do, uh, as usual, is go in here and look at some live shops and uh, just talk about tags today and uh, a lot of the uh, important things to keep in mind when you're uh, doing your listings. Uh, so let's do um, let's do sh furniture today. Uh, well, not really furniture, I guess. In my mind, for some reason, I'm thinking of a, a shelf. So let's do a a wood shelf. See what Etsy brings up. All right. These are a lot of bestsellers. People love wood shelf or wood shelves rather. So let's pop into here. All right, so one thing you wanna do and keep in mind when you're doing your tags, you should have probably done your title first um, and then you're gonna come down and work on your, your tags. Uh, so when you wanna, when you're doing your tags, you can scroll down here and see all the tags that they used. You want to try and use some of the same tags that you used in your title. So let's scroll back up here. Rustic industrial floating shelves, floating shelf, industrial pipe brackets, wall shelf, pipe shelving. So they don't have any spacing at all. So this is basically one huge keyword. I'm surprised people are finding this, but it looks like it's doing really well. So, um, but these are, if you break this out, these are all keywords. So rustic industrial floating shelves is, is more or less one. That's a long tail keyword because it's more than two words. Floating shelf is another one. Industrial pipe brackets, wall shelf is another one. Pipe shelving, rustic wood shelf. And then they have an extra shelf in here, which is, a little redundant. Um, and then down here, home and living, storage and organization, shelving, floating shelf, floating shelves, wood shelves, wood shelf, floating bookshelf, rustic shelf, reclaimed wood, industrial. So these are all descriptive tags relating to the product. So like I said, you wanna try and use some of the same tags that are in your title. So, you know, rusting shelf is used, used above, floating bookshelf is used, Reca reclaimed wood, industrial. So that's a little bit more broad, open shelving. So you wanna think of it as a funnel you know, you want to start specific and then broaden out if you're running out of ideas. So the industrial wood shelf is probably the, you know, pretty specific term, um, which they have it kind of, but it's broken out into multiple keywords here. They have it above in the title, so it'll get still get pulled in, in uh, SEO. Um, 
So floating wood shell, I would use floating wood shells. See, they, some of this stuff is redundant. Floating shelf, wood shelves. And you can't fit usually some of these long tail keywords because there is a character limit um, with your tags. Whereas titles, you have 160 char characters. Um, but when you're doing your tags, you can only fit 20 characters before you got to break it out. So sometimes you do have to break out some of your long tail keywords into short ones, which is fine. Um, you know, if you want to do industrial wood floating shelves, it's going to be too long. So you can break it out into floating shelves and industrial shelves or wood shelves. That's totally fine. Uh, one thing you want to try to avo uh, avoid if possible is redundancy. Um, it's not going to hurt you, but for the simple fact that it's going to uh, take away a spot of your tag where you could use it for something else. So this is a good example here. Um, where they have wood shelves and wood shelf. That is, Etsy's gonna look at that probably and say it's the same keyword. Um, so you're kind of wasting a space there. So I would try and think of a, you know, a different keyword so you're not uh, being redundant when you're doing your listings. Uh, other than that, I mean, they, they do a pretty good job of, of uh, separating out their keywords. There's not a lot of redundancy, which is good. And they go really broad. Home and living is, is broad. Storage and organization is really broad. But then they are also specific with floating shelves, floating shelf, iron pipe shelf, um, which I don't think there's, is there iron? Yeah, there is iron on that. So that's good. Um, they probably could have done industrial wood shelves together. I don't know if there's enough spot. I don't know how many characters that is. Either way, they broke it out. So it's still gonna get pulled in SEO. So the main thing, uh, the main point is to use all 13 tags, which they did here, which is good. Um, and then think of different keywords using some of your title keywords that describe your product. That's really what you wanna try to do in a nutshell. Um, with your listings. So let's look at another one here. Um, a lot of floating shelves, wood shelf bracket. Let's see what this one is a corbel, corbel bracket. So wood shelf bracket, corbels pair for farmhouse, corbels. All right, so that was their title home and living, home and decor, wall decor. Portable shelf, antique white, candle scone, shelf bracket, bracket, shelf. So that's redundant, bracket and shelf. They already have shelf bracket here. So they didn't really need that. They could have used something else. Farmhouse decor, floating shelves, architectural, corbels, corbels pair, wood shelf bracket. So they, again, they do a pretty good job. Um, with using their different tags uh, and going broad, you know, architectural, home decor, home and living, and then uh, bringing it back with specifics such as corbels, you know, antique white, you know, shelf bracket. Um, so yeah, they do a good job and they use all their, their tags here, uh, which is good. Um, they have some some longer tags, some two, some three world, three word tags in here, which is good. You want to try and do, again, you have only 20 character spots, so you're not going to be able to do as many long tail keywords as you want. Um, just get those into your title, uh, which will help you. All right, so let's look at one more. I'm sure you guys get the idea of what you want to include. Oil shelf. All right. Bath and beauty, essential oils, oil rack, oil shelf, rack, housewarming gift. So that's really broad, but that could be good. Uh, maybe a shelf housewarming gift would be good. Uh, but it's probably going to pull that because they already have shelf in here. Rustic wood shelf, wall decor, essential oil shelf. That's, that's a good one. Nail polish shelf, nail polish rack, oil storage, home decor. 
Yeah, they, they do a good job here. These are all bestsellers for a reason. Um, they describe their products really well. Um, they're, they're specific in their tags um, and they're related, but they do go a little bit broad. So again, think of it as a funnel. Uh, the bottom is very specific and then the top is a little broad. Um, so you wanna have both to kind of pull people into your shop. Um, so yeah, they do a good job with using all the tags and uh, they're pretty specific. All right, one more, and then uh, I'll let you guys go. All right, let's check out this bath caddy. Wooden bath caddy, tray, reclaimed solid, wood shelf, wine tablet, mobile phone holder, rustic oak. So these tags aren't separated either. Um, you wanna, I like, it's personal preference, I like separating them with dashes or commas just cause it, it's easier to read, but it's still gonna pull in the SEL. So bath and beauty, bath accessories, bath tray, bath bar, bath caddy, wood bath tray, wood bath bar, wood bath caddy. Which again, bath caddy is used here, wood bath caddy, bath tray, bath tray. This, it's a little redundant. Um, you can use that for another keyword. Reclaimed oak, oak shelf, made to order oak, custom oak. You know, you could also, maybe bathroom caddy gift, gift for bathroom, uh, bathroom, bathroom wood gift, um, stuff like that. But they do a good job of uh, describing their item and using different keywords and they're not really the same and they're not too broad either. Um, you know, if they were just put, if they just put in here wood or grain uh, pipe or something like that, or bathroom, you know, you, that's not describing anything. Those are extremely broad um, when you're doing it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you want to try the main points. Try to use some of your titles, your title keywords in your listings if possible. Um, two or three word tags if possible. Don't repeat if possible, your, your tags. So like I said, it's not gonna hurt you. It's just gonna take away some tag spots where you can put some, some other tag in there. Each tag could possibly bring in customers. Uh, make sure to, to fill out all of your tags. There's 13 spots, so don't leave any spots um, empty. You wanna always try and fill your spots. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna cover, and I, I did this in the uh, listing titles as well, uh, but if you're, if you're running out of tag ideas, uh, what you can do is go into Etsy search and, and use it. It's very powerful uh, as far as giving you ideas uh, for your listing. So I'm running out of ideas for my floating shelf. So I'm just going to type in floating shelf. Well, if I type in floating and you'll see floating shelves, floating shelf, floating nightstand, floating shelf bracket, floating wood shelves, um, floating corner shelf. Um, so these are all good descriptive keywords. Uh, that you can use in your tags. Um, you can play around with this. I mean, you can go very broad. You can just do shelf and see what it pulls up and see if any of those apply to you. Um, then you can start going more specific. You can do wood shelf. And then you'll see here that it provides uh, different um, listing tags that you can use. Uh, you can do wood bathroom shelf, which is really specific. Um, so you, you'll get less here because this is long tail keywords, but just play around with the different uh, tags that you guys already have. Type them in here and see what else comes up. You may have a related tag that you can use. Um, that'll be really good. That'll help pull, pull in more traffic to uh, your shop. So hopefully that helps uh, you guys. Hopefully that makes sense in regard to tags. All right, everyone. Uh, the last section uh, that I want to cover with you in this mini course is uh, kind of a bonus section. I, I recently just added it to uh, this course because I thought it was really important, especially coming into 2019, uh, is shipping. So I'm not sure if you've thought about the, the shipping uh, on your listings yet, but if you have gotten that far, um, there's basically two things that you have to consider. A, uh, do I want to ship to only the United States or do I want to ship to the United States and other places um, you know, in the world. 
So a couple things to consider um, when deciding on that. Uh, the first thing is pricing. Uh, if your item is over the, if it's basically over a pound, you can't ship it USPS first class, which means that your pricing skyrockets uh, for international shipping. Um, so that's one thing to consider. Uh, now that you can make it where the customer pays for that, um, but the shipping, depending on the country, can vary greatly. Uh, so you, it just becomes really kind of muddy uh, how much you want to charge for, for shipping or if you want to allow um, Etsy to, to calculate that for you. Another factor to uh, consider uh, when shipping your product is um, the, the claims forms, which Etsy does make it easier for you when shipping. Uh, the shipping label is the claims form which is nice, you don't have to do separate paperwork, you just put the, the label on and that is your, your claims form. However, um, when recipients or the uh, buyers get your item, there may be extra fees associated with them picking up their item from the mail. Um, I've run into it, especially with the UK, where there's duty fees um, and the buyer doesn't realize that there's duty fees and you know we, don't be in the United States. We don't know what all the duty fees are and, and we can't charge that. We can't pay for those up front. That's the buyer's responsibility. Um, so there's no way for us to know that. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, $20, $30 in duty fees for, you know, and they're paying $20 for an item they they get pretty upset and then they blame us. So just keep that in mind. I would, if you're going to sell international, just make sure you put, uh, for international buyers to make sure they don't have any extra fees um, on their end uh, because I have had it happen where they get upset because they have to pay duty fees um, and I have no idea of knowing if there's duty fees or not um, but they still you know you get blamed for that because they have to pay it to get their item so it's one thing to just it's something to keep in mind um, and it is a little bit of an extra hassle sometimes to sell international um, so it really just depends what you're selling. Do your research. If it has a big international market, then you're probably going to want to do it. Um, if you know you're only getting a couple international orders every month, uh, maybe it's it's not worth the the headaches. So just keep that in mind. Um, but the, the biggest is the cost of shipping international, especially when you go over a pound. Uh, it becomes uh, significantly more expensive. So hopefully that helps um, and hopefully that uh, makes your life a little bit easier when deciding on what to ship, uh, how to ship it, and uh, the cost of shipping it.